We are presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport, but together at WinBet, Eric Allen here to recap the first couple days of free agency with my good friend, Brian Baldinger from NFL Network, who is joining us right now as we tape from Hawaii at 4.15 a.m. Talk about dedication, Baldy. We appreciate you, brother. It's all right. It's all right. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, free agency, I was in L.A. covering it for three straight days and looking at all the names that got signed and watching closely to what the Jets did throughout the three days, the tampering period and then the signing period. And uh, so I'm over here. Why? I'm getting ready to go do some shark diving this morning, EA. You know, I mean, why wouldn't you if you're in Hawaii, you get that opportunity. Have you dove with the sharks before? And can you tell us what that experience is like? Well, I've dove with a lot of sharks before, you know, sharks in Fiji and, you know, sharks in the Sea of Cortez and sharks in Costa Rica. But this is like, we're chumming the waters. We're bringing the sharks to us. I'm not going to look for, you know, like nurse sharks are like little puppies, you know, like you go pet them and, you know, but I mean, we're, we're bringing the, we're bringing the big boys, you know, it's like signing a big free agent EA. We're, we're bringing the tiger sharks to us and the bull sharks. We're, We're bringing the big boys to us today. Okay, so let's start right there with the big boys. Let's start with like the Tomlinson, a Duke product, much like yourself. What are the Jets getting here as Joe Douglas continues to back up his words and addresses the offensive line? First two drafts, first round, he goes Makai Becton, then Elijah Vera Tucker here in free agency uh, this year, 2022. Lankin Tomlinson gets it underway. Well, I, I think it was an unbelievable signing. First of all, I thought Miami was going to take him because Mike mm-hmm. McDaniel, the new head coach, knew him as well as anybody in San Francisco, and they needed offensive line help. I thought they were going to scoop him up right away. But, you know, the fact that John Benton, the offensive line coach, knows him, Lakin knows the terminology, knows the system, knows the run game, the way it's supposed to be run, the way he's done it for five straight years in San Francisco. And when I say that, EA, I'm seeing five straight years, like every Sunday, every game, playoff games. I mean, he's got a heck of a resume underneath him here uh, since, you know, while he was in San Francisco. So he's been a durable player. He's been a good player. I think he can help, you know, whatever guys that they end up drafting on the offense line, kind of helping to develop them. But it's a smart guy. Like, you know, he's got a a Duke degree. Like me, he's got (laughs) two degrees. Um, he's a smart guy, uh, loves football, still under 30 years old. You know, he's got a lot of football left. I thought it was a tremendous signing because really when you look at Ali Vera Tucker and you look at Lake and Tomlinson, you know, inside at the guard position, I mean, the, the, the front of that pocket is now has the beginnings to being really stable for Zach Wilson. And I think that was really important. Yeah, what do you think overall of that line right now? You mentioned AVT. Most people think that he's going to be either definitely a Pro Bowl player, perhaps an all-pro, like a first-team kind of all-pro player. The Jets hope Mackay Becton is back in the fold at full health this year. They love what they got out of George Fant. Uh, Robert Sala has said, hey, there's going to be open competition at that left tackle position. Connor McGovern performed well at the center position uh, last year. Morgan Moses in free agency signs with the Baltimore Ravens, a good pickup for the Ravens. But with that being said, uh, do you like what Douglas is doing across the line? I do. I like it. The key really is Makai. Because yeah. if Makai can come back healthy and in shape, then they have a, they have you know a guy that can be a dominant left tackle. And I think he's the whole key. George Fant is going to be, he's going to be just fine. He's very athletic. You know, he runs this scheme really well. Um, you know, he's, he doesn't have a lot of tread off the tire, uh, you know, in his playing day. So I, I think the line has a real chance uh, to be in a good line. And it takes a while for a good line to become a great line. You know, you can't just an, anoint them being great because they sign good players or draft a good players. I mean, it's got to come together. And they got to play together. And so that's, the, you know, that's the next big step. The offseason is really important. But to me, the whole key to this is Mackay. Yeah, they can fill his shoes. They can, you know, if things don't work out. But he he, he can make this a special offensive line because of his ability. And it's really up to Mackay. I haven't seen him. Um, you know, I don't know what kind of shape he's in. I don't know how many people have been around him. But he needs to come back and get his head on straight, 
you know, and come back and become the player that his ability says he can be. Tomlinson, uh, what will he mean to the locker room? Because you talked about his durability before. How about his postseason experience, too? When you're talking about somebody who came from San Francisco, he was where he was there with those guys. He was there with Salah and John Benton and Mike LaFleur when they took over in 2017 at the bottom and they ascended. They went to the Super Bowl. And last year, you got Tomlinson playing the NFC championship game. Yeah. No, 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 look, there's there's certain players that you know, they, they end up in the postseason every year. I mean, quarterbacks can only be evaluated in the postseason. The regular season, look, it's a grind. It's 17 games. It's 18 weeks. It's, you know, it's a grind. But it's about getting to the postseason. And, you know, Lakin came from Detroit where they really couldn't put it together. You know, uh, that's where he got drafted. Um, San Francisco signed him. And then all San Francisco did under Kyle Shanahan and, and uh, you know, in that group there, was just improve the line to the point where you go get Trent Williams, who is an all pro left tackle. You get Alex Mack, who, you know, has been an all pro center and you just keep building. And that's what they did in San Francisco. You know, you had, you had the tight ends to it and the fullback and everything else. And all of a sudden you get an elite running game in San Francisco. And that's where everything, everything kind of started. And that's what they've got to do in New York. They've got to get the running game cranked up. Where every week, it's not on a one-time thing or a sometime thing, EA. That they've got to, you know, whether it's Michael Carter, Tevin Coleman, you know, whoever's carrying the rock. I mean, it's got to be an every week thing that they could put up 120, 150 yards on the ground or more, you know, and finish games out on the ground and get those short yardage runs on third and one and punch it in from the goal line. I mean, that's that's what they have to be able to do. And Lakin knows about that. He knows how important that is. And, and you know, when it comes time to run them behind him, like they trounced the Rams, you know, I think five straight times before they lost to him in the, you know, in the championship game. But, you know, they 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 own the Rams, Aaron Donald and Von Miller they, and some of the guys, they, Leonard Floyd, they own those guys up front in the run game. And they broke their will a bunch, you know. So he knows what that's like going up against elite players, elite teams. And in the postseason. Baldy, I asked Lincoln to de describe his game in one word. And you know what he said? Trench warfare. And I said, that's two words. And he said, no, it's not. It's one yeah. word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's it's one word. It's one word because I've used it a lot. And, you know, the good teams, all you have to do, the consistently good teams in this league, EA, you look at them and you always look at the trenches. And what they've done. I mean, two years ago when Tampa Bay won, their five offense linemen started, except for the right guard, started every game. Um, they, they were an elite bunch, the right tackle is an all pro player. Uh, you know, you go to and see what Kansas City did to get back to the playoffs last year. They built their offensive line. I mean, that's where you want to be a consistent playoff team. You look to the trenches, both sides of the ball. And Lakin knows about what trench warfare is all about. I've done so many breakdowns on the San Francisco offensive line and in their run game and how when it's operating at a high level EA, it's a symphony. It's a symphony where every instrument is just in tune and playing together. And it you you've got to you got to start with the fundamentals. That's where it always begins. There's a toolbox you got to take to every game with you. And then once you get that, then it's a, a question of fine tuning the parts to play together. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $500 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. That's some sweet music right there, Baldy. Uh, the Jets needed an upgrade at the tight end position this offseason. Enter CJ Uzama. They also added Tyler Conklin who had a career here last year in Minnesota. Let's start with CJ. Here's another guy, great postseason experience, who's going to be big in the room. How critical was that addition 
for the entire offense, the way Mike LaFleur, Mike LaFleur wants to run it, and especially the young quarterback, Zach Wilson? Well, you know, they asked the tight ends to be a you know a big part of the run game. You know, if you look at George Kittle and what he has done in San Francisco, I mean, he's, he's kind of the measuring stick for blocking tight ends. But, you know, they were a big uh, – Cincinnati has been, uh, under Zach Taylor, a big 11 personnel team. So one tight end, one running back, three wide receivers. But you, if you're going to be the 11 personnel team, your tight end has to be able to block. Uh, and he's because you have to have a, a strong side run game. That means that your tight end has to go up against starting defensive ends and outside linebackers and be able to get stalemates, hold his own, and win some battles. And I think CJ has been able to do that. Um, you look at the success that they have had in the, in the run game in Cincinnati, especially last year. Um, you know, he was a big part of that. And when he got hurt against Kansas City and went out, the run game really suffered. But CJ is. He he is a you know he's a great he's a great person he's a great guy like he he loves football it comes across when you talk to him uh, he had a career year last year a real breakout year when he got a chance to really be the guy in Cincinnati he's still a young player but you know you go back and you watch Thursday night football against Jacksonville last year he won the game for him um, you know his ability to get open to to work the middle of the field after the catch. Like he's, he's, he's a, what we, we call tight ends that can both block and catch the ball a, a Y, you know, they're a Y in the offense and he's a true Y like he can, cause he can really block. He can be in the end of the line tight end, not like some of these flex tight ends that are out there calling themselves tight ends that are just pass catchers. This guy's a true Y. And so I, I thought it was a great signing. I didn't think that they could pry him away from Cincinnati as big a part as he is in Cincinnati in that offense. Yeah, 49 catches last year, 493 receiving yards, five touchdowns. I like what he said when he met with the media, Baldy. They're going to get someone who's one of the best damn tight ends in the league. He's got <laughs> attitude. He is uh, instantaneously, he walks in that locker room, and he's one of the primary leaders on this team, I think. I, I agree with that. You know, and you can say 49 catches. Well, you know, what about, you know, Travis Kelsey, he gets 100 every year. That's not, that's not that offense. I mean, they've got Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler. They had guys to throw the ball to. I mean, he he was caught 49 passes because they needed those throws. You know, and you go back and you watch some of them. Uh, you know, they were important catches. But he, he he's a leader. He, he is. And he is a good player, a really good player. And I think, you know, last year was the first year he really got a chance to start and play, um, you know, every week. Uh, they've had other guys in front of them, you know, but, uh, you know, he, he took over this year and he's an ascending player. I mean, I think he, he knows he could get better. And if you look at him physically, like he's, he looks like a Y, like he's big, thick, and strong, you know, he's got good size to him. Um, and so I think he's got everything it takes to be that guy that just lines up, you know, next to, uh, you know, one of your tackles, you know, every mm -hmm. single Sunday, and you're going to get a good performance from him. Oh, real quickly on Conklin, you're talking about a guy who's not a speedster, but he's a good route runner, short, intermediate range. He's an effort blocker, tough as hell. That's the scouting report on him. 61 catches last year for 593 yards and three touchdowns. So now you have the ability to run multiple tight end sets. You do have other tight ends on this roster as well, but let's not forget about Conklin either. Well, you can't because you know if you look at Minnesota, EA, you know, they had Kyle Rudolph there for a long time. Uh, you know, his first round pick, you know, left in free agency last year, um, you know, to the New York Giants. You know, and then they had drafted Irv Smith at Alabama with the first round, you know, to be the tight end. Uh that number two when they lost Kyle Rudolph, and then Irv Smith got hurt this year. And really it became Tyler Conklin's job. You know, once Rudolph left in free agency and Irv Smith got hurt, he became the starting tight end. And Minnesota's an 11 personnel team like Cincinnati. And so, you know, it was a big, big deal, you know, for him to be able to go out there, run the drags on the bootlegs and, you know, the whole route tree that they asked their tight ends to do. They're a good offense, top 10 offense. And I thought Tyler Conklin really came into his own. You know, it's amazing what happens to some of these guys. CJ's another example. But, you know, when they get a chance to play every down, start every week, 
Like you, you find out what these guys are all about, what they're made of. And Tyler Conklin's a good player. This isn't like a backup tight end or, I mean, they, if they want to be a two tight end team and go why, why, you know, formations, they've got the flexibility to do that right now because you've got to, you have to really look at both these guys as pass catchers. You know, sometimes you get tight ends come in there and they're just window dressing or they're just blockers. I mean, both these guys are legitimate receivers. So the offense has a lot more versatility and flexibility to it today than it did a week ago. Let's flip it to the defensive side of the ball. You talked about what are you made of? Jordan Whitehead. Wow. I think Jets fans are going to love this guy. I think they're going to run out to the merchandise stores and get his jersey because when I think about New York and I think about tough people, this guy brings it. Played in the Super Bowl with the torn labrum, and also Todd Bowles used him a little bit of everywhere down there with the Buccaneers. Well, you know, he's a thumper. You know, <laughs> like when he hits you, you go down. He doesn't miss tackles. He's a good tackler. He's a thumper, but he also is a playmaker. And, you know, he's a young guy. He's just played four years now. Mm -hmm. uh, Tampa Bay had drafted very well in the secondary. Uh, they were all homegrown players in Tampa. And so, you know, he was one of them along with, you know, Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis and, you know, Sean Murphy Bunning. I mean, they, were, they, they enjoyed, you know, you know and, and Antoine Winfield. Um, Antoine Winfield was drafted last year and he became the free safety. So Jordan Whitehead really got a chance to play on a variety of places, whether if they were in cover two and he was sitting back there, half field safety, or if he was dropping down into the box to stop the run, or he was dropping down on blitzes that Todd had to go cover the, the slot receiver or the tight end. He did all those things, but then he made plays. You know, he popped the ball out against the Saints, you know, in a playoff game, which was a big part. Devin White recovered it, you know, and uh, they shocked New Orleans, um, you know, uh, in the playoff game. And so I think that, you know, he has the ability to do a lot of different things. And, you know, if you look at the safety market, Marcus Williams went off the board. I don't know. He got a contract twice the amount that Jordan Whitehead did. You know, Marcus May got signed. So there was like a rotation of safeties. There always are because they're hard to find in the draft. Uh, just because the college game is so different, but they they got themselves a great player, great young yeah. player that's ascending. That you know, when I say thumper, like you know, he 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 brings he packs a pretty good punch when he hits you. Yeah, he can be a tone setter back there in that defensive backfield for the Jets. How about let's stay in the defensive backfield? DJ Reed, interesting history in terms of coming out of high school he did not have any division 1 offers goes the juco route eventually goes to Kansas State as a fifth round pick of the 49ers Robert Sala was the defensive coordinator there of course he starts his career plays a couple seasons gets hurt gets waived gets an opportunity in Seattle and last season he was the Seahawks top cornerback and this is a guy if you look at his numbers people will say well he's 5 foot 9 he can't play outside he played it really darn well last year. Well, what I like about this signing, because people aren't going to be probably too excited about DJ Reed, just because, you know, he's not a household name. But I love the fact that Robert Sala knows him. Mm -hmm. And he knows, so he, he knows what he's about. You know, when, you know, when they, when they drafted him, you know, he helped in the recruiting process. He had him in his room. You know, he knew what he could do. He went to a Super Bowl with them. You know, like coaches that you can connect the dots with, like you could see, you can almost hear Robert, you know, in, in that room with Joe Douglas and, and a lot of the scouts, you know, and Chris Johnson and, and, and Woody and just going, this is the guy that we need. Like, you know, when, when your head coach is going to bat for you, that's saying something because he knows his practice habits. He knows his work ethic. He knows what he's been like. He's played with him, uh, coached with him, coached against him, all that kind of stuff. I like that aspect to the signing. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. 
Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. Baldy, what do you think about this kid's attitude? He said, if you watch my tape from last year and the year before that, it's CB1. My stats compared to the all pros this year. To Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Terrell, J.C. Jackson, my stats are right there with those guys, and I'm going to take another step this year. Well, I mean, you know, look, if you don't have confidence as a defensive back, I mean, you're not going to be worth <laughs> very much. Um, there's plenty of cornerbacks his size in the NFL that have been great players. I mean, Stephon Gilmore is not a big guy. Joe Hayden's not a big guy. I mean, tall guy. Um, if they come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, either you can cover or you can't cover. Either you can play the ball in the air or you can't. Uh, by the time you get to your fifth year, which DJ is in his fifth year now. And so he come up, you know, there's plenty of guys in this league. J.C. Jackson was one that came in through the back door. They weren't heavily recruited. They, you know, J.C. wasn't a draft pick. Um, some guys don't get invited to the combines. So there's all kinds of stories out there. It's about what's inside the guy. And when DJ says his best football is in front of him, I believe him. I, I believe that he can play in this league. And I think Robert Sala knows it. But, you know, the important thing is you get a guy that can play and you bring him into the room and you let these guys compete. You're going to need four corners throughout the course of a season, four starting level corners, all right, to compete, you know, in a passing league right now, especially when you go up against Buffalo twice a year and what that that monster can do up there. And so you're going to need four. Bryce Hall has been a nice development for a kid that was injured at Virginia, you know, his last year and started two straight years now. Tall corner. Looks like he is a starting left corner for the Jets. Let, let's just add some pieces. Let's add some competition to that room. What do you think about Braxton Barrios resigning? You know, a lot of people thought he's going to test the market and ultimately maybe he'll go away. I thought it was interesting once he resigned saying that, hey, listen, I wasn't going to auction this off to the highest bidder. The Jets were a great, great destination to me. I think that speaks volumes of what is building here. I th I, th I think the same thing. I think Braxton Berrios could have gone. I mean, I, there's, you know, there's a need for slot receivers, kick returners, you know, all those kind of things. I mean, he's a football player. And I think his best football is in front of him. He hadn't really had a chance to really start. But you can see, you know, the fly sweeps, uh, the hit screens. Like, he's got elite speed. And, you know, I like teams that are fast, EA. You know, and so you measure your team speed in a lot of different ways, but the return game is important. Being able to catch, you know, flies, you know, take fly sweeps to the house. Um, just add speed to every position. And Braxton Berrios brings speed and toughness to your football team. And so, you know, sometimes you have to gauge your team. You, you become a better team in practice, you know, and good practicing players like Braxton is a guy that has stayed healthy. I like that element, and I thought it was a great re-signing to get Braxton Berrios back in the fold. You know, you can you, your return game, it's it's not what it used to be because of some of the rules now, but it's nice to have a guy back there that can take it to the house, and it's nice that your slot receiver, you know, has that type of ability. Now, obviously, Elijah Moore is, or, you know, is probably their starting, you know, slot receiver, but there's a lot of different ways that you can use Braxton. The Jets also have agreed to terms of running back. Tevin Coleman, quarterback Joe Flacco returns. LaMarcus Joyner, Will Parks, Nathan Shepard, and reserve offensive lineman Connor McDermott and Dan Feeney. I just want to look ahead real quick, quickly to the draft. I know we got plenty of time to talk about the draft, but after these signings, does, how does that impact your thinking, Baldy, when you look at the Jets situation in terms of 4-10 and 10 in the first round? Well, what it does is it really fills your needs right now. I mean, you 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 basically have filled, you know, eleven slots on both sides of the ball. Now you can go into the draft and really just look at your board. You know, at number four, I mean, you you have your choice. You know, if you if Sauce Gardner is a guy that you want at corner, I mean, if you want one of these edge pass rushers, Kayvon Thibodeau. I mean, I'm just throwing names out that people mm -hmm. are familiar with now after the combine. But you really have your choice right now. To really, I mean, if you want to trade down, you know, and and gain more picks because this draft is really deep. I mean, you've got flexibility now. And you don't you don't have to go, well, we got to fill that cornerback position. We better go get that guy. 
I mean, you filled all your immediate needs right now. And so now you can really look at, okay, let's stack our board and let's really be disciplined about it. And, you know, if somebody says, you know, we want to come up to number four and go get so-and-so, well, mm. you, you have that ability to listen and to see what the offer is um, if you want to trade down or if you want to move up to go get an elite player, whatever it might be. Um, and those two picks at the top of the second round are a big part of this. Um, you know, to me, this is what Joe, like part of free agency was. Like now we can really go after the draft and get the best players available and truly believe that and stick to it. 30,000 foot view. Just initial thoughts on Kyle Hamilton, the impressive safety from Notre Dame. You mentioned Sauce Gardner before. Uh, most likely the top cornerback taken in this draft. And then the edge rushers at the top of this class. I've been speaking to people, and there's some thought out there. You could see as many as eight to ten defensive linemen taken in the first round. Yeah, no, that's, that's um, you know, I, I did a lot at the Combine. and I was around Daniel Jeremiah, our draft expert at the NFL Network. And, you know, th those numbers aren't inflated. That's mm -hmm. probably what it's going to be. And when you mention, you know, Hamilton – uh, as the number one safety, and you look at Sauce Gardner, there's really not a hole in Sauce Gardner's game. Like, he is what everybody's looking for at that position. And so you're going to have a you, – you know, you may have a chance at both those guys. Uh, you know, and then the edge guys, you know, Hutchinson and Thibodeau, and, you know, you just keep going, you know, Karloftis. I mean, there's – there's uh, th you know, and then you look at the interior guys. Um, you know, there you really have – a great number of players. It's the deepest part of this draft. A lot of people tell you, you know, at this point in, you know, mid-March that it's the best edge class that we've seen come out probably since 2011 when Von Miller and J.J. Watt and some of those guys came out. So, like, it's 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 a deep, talented group. Um, and the Jets are certainly going to have uh, their opportunities to go after some of the players that we just mentioned. What's your top headline so far in NFL free agency? This is like a separate season. The NFL offseason has become really something else in terms of the player movement. Big time uh, changes throughout our league. Well, you know, look, all you have to do, EA, and you could do this every year, but, you know, look at what the Cincinnati Bengals have done, okay, in just two years. I mean, they have struck free agent gold, all right? In addition to drafting, you know, with the number one pick, they were unfortunate to be able to have, you know, go get Joe Burrow and then to get Jamar Chase. And, you know, in two years, you know, they've gone from three and 13 to, you know, minutes away from winning a Super Bowl game. So everybody should look at that and go, okay, did the Raiders with Chandler Jones, Devontae Adams make that kind of a leap? You know, mm -hmm. did the Buffalo Bills signing Von Miller and some of the people that they signed? You know, did they make the leap? Did, uh, you know, the Los Angeles Chargers with J.C. Jackson and Khalil Mack make the leap? And when I say make the leap, I mean make the leap all the way to Super Bowl Sunday. And so I think there's a lot of optimism, you know, when you see elite names, guys that, you know, we talk about every Sunday in the highlight reels. Do we do we look at uh, – my, my, my buddy's taking me shark fishing, uh, shark diving, just – popped in but anyways like the, you 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 can build your team and change your fortunes in free agency and we we saw a lot of teams that their fan base believes that that's kind of what they've done here in the last week all right the car is running why don't you tell jets fans who you're going shark fishing with today well you know i, I mean it's just ironic that we're talking <laughs> about the jets hall and i'm going with the former new york jets uh player rich miano who only had 17 career interceptions you know, and was a, a big member of the New York Jets in the big 90s, part of uh, some good staffs. Pete Carroll was on his staff. You know, a lot of guys that were there uh, back in the 90s. And, of course, of course, played with me with the Philadelphia Eagles on the number one defense in the NFL. So he knows a little bit about defense. Well, brother, you guys take it to the house out there in the water today, you and Rich Miano. Thanks for getting up so early in Hawaii. We will talk soon. Yeah. Let's do it, EA. Enjoyed being with you. Thanks.